And I want to tell you a couple of stories of people who are part of this change that have inspired me very, very much. Craig Watts was a chicken farmer in North Carolina. He'd been doing this for about 30 years. He worked for Purdue, which means that they provided him birds, they provided him all the infrastructure and technology and guidance, and he sold them the meat. He ended up clearing about five cents per pound. He would, it had taken him decades, but he had almost paid back the loans he had had to take out in order to get established in the chicken business in the first place. His operation was typical. He was an award-winning producer, and he had won a bunch of awards for Purdue. He was inspected weekly, and here's what he had to do. 20,000 birds in one warehouse. Average bird had about one square foot. Their wingspan is three feet. They were bred to be morbidly obese. So these birds, by the time they were three months, it was the equivalent to if a human infant weighed about 600 pounds. They were so overweight they couldn't walk. So these birds would lie on the ground in feces. Not just their feces, but the feces of generations of birds before them because the concrete that they stood on was covered in poop that went back and it was cleaned about every three years. There were no windows open and by contract he wasn't allowed to have any windows or any natural light or any fresh air because that could stimulate the birds to move more, which would drive down the feed conversion ratio. The animals were lying in poop and they would lose feathers and then they would op develop open sores and about 5% of them died before they were killed. So when Craig would walk around his chicken barn, there would be littered dead bodies lying around. About 5% of the birds were dead. Most of them were immobile. And this was his award-winning operation. But then one day, he sees Jim Perdue on television with an ad. And Jim Perdue is saying, we treat our chickens well, and they're happy, and they're healthy, and that makes good meat for you. And he says, what I'm doing might be cruel, but I am not a liar. And if I allow this man to speak for me, then I am lying. So he decided to tell the truth. So he did something very unusual. Mr. Craig Watts invited Compassion in World Farming to come on in with cameras rolling and film his award-winning chicken operation and see what was actually going on there. This wasn't an undercover operation. This was a farmer opening the doors and saying, come see what's really here. And he goes on this, this video and he says, I'm no psychologist, but I'll tell you what, these birds aren't happy. I'm not a vet, but I'll tell you something else, they're not healthy. And he shows all that's going on. And this video goes up on YouTube and it goes crazy viral. And millions of people see it. And he starts going on national TV. And uh, Craig didn't have a lot of education. He, there was nothing in his background that really prepared him for this. But he kind of stepped out. Purdue was not pleased. So they tried to find him. And they tried to make his life miserable. And he got out of the chicken industry. And now there's crops growing on his land. And he has become a consultant. He helps factory farmers transition to more sustainable and ethical career paths. Bless him. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much courage it took for a man who was that steeped in that way of living to make that kind of a change? Can you imagine how hard his heart must have had to get to try to cope with 30 years of doing that to birds? And yet somewhere inside him he knew it wasn't right. And eventually, he chose to tell the world. And he chose to do something different. When he had no background in knowing how to do anything different, he said, I'm going to step out and I'm going to create a whole new life for myself, trying to do something different and make amends and make the world a better place. Bless him, right? Another story that inspires me so much is Kate McGowie Smith. Kate McGowie Smith lives in Canada. And she was diagnosed with severe diabetic retinopathy. She had massive uh, lung issues fueled by her diabetes. And by the uh, age of about 30, she was over 100 pounds overweight. She lost her eyesight. She couldn't walk. And she was hooked up to a 30-pound oxygen tank that she needed to take everywhere just to breathe. And her doctors told her that they recommended she have a good will because her little children 
might not have their mother much longer. Kate was given no hope by her doctors, but thankfully she watched a movie called Forks Over Knives. And she was very inspired by it, and she decided to put it into action. She gave up all animal products, all sugars, went totally plant-based. She started, she taught herself to cook while blind, in a wheelchair, hooked up to a 30-pound oxygen tank. She snacked on greens six times a day, and she got results. She lost 100 pounds. She reversed her diabetes. She reversed her retinopathy and got her eyesight back. She got her mobility back and she could walk, and she got her breathing back and said, bye-bye oxygen tank. Kate doesn't have to be afraid now that her children are about to lose their mom. And she wanted to go further, so she started an organization called Fork Smart. She does nutritional coaching, sharing her story and helping inspire as many people as she possibly can to make these kinds of changes. When I was talking with Kate and I was interviewing her for my book, I, she, one of the things she shared with me was that this had all brought mortality very present for her. And you know, she's reversed all the things I just described, but she still had uh, only 12% kidney function as a repercussion of the diabetes. And that's not expected to ever come back. But she hasn't needed dialysis rather amazingly because her diet and lifestyle are so pure and healthy. But she still knows she's vulnerable, and she doesn't know what her future holds, and her body's been through a lot. And she said, I think about the legacy I'm leaving for my kids a lot. It's just never left me, and it's maybe one of the gifts of this experience is that I think I don't take life for granted for a single day. And she said, in that sense, I think I'm not expecting to be able to leave my kids, leave my kids with much money. That's just not my path in life. I don't have much. She said, but I think I'm going to leave them something a lot more important, which is a living legacy of health. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, for one thing, they're healthier. My son was 80 pounds overweight. He was in pre-diabetes. He has changed his life. He's lost those 80 pounds, and he's healthy. And by the way, oh, I didn't think I mentioned this, but my husband also had diabetes. He lost 70 pounds. We've been on this journey together, and he's feeling a lot better. And I was like, whoa. See, the ripples spread, don't they? Kate made all these changes, and now her kids don't have to lose their mom, and her husband doesn't have to lose his wife, and she doesn't have to lose her life, but also how many other people are hearing her story and realizing there is hope. No matter how insurmountable the challenges may be, no matter what suffering you may be facing, there is hope. Not a guarantee, no promise, because of course the odds are the odds, and you can dramatically change your odds. That doesn't mean there's a guarantee you will never suffer. We're, life is a terminal condition. But as long as we are here, what are we going to do with this life? How are we going to live? How will we inhabit our days? You know, some people say, oh, you plant-based eaters, life doesn't get longer. It just seems like it. Because time flies when you're having fun. There's not a lot of fun to be had when you eat vegetables. And I say, oh, that's where you're wrong. Because, you know, a lot of people, um, actually, their world gets so small when they're suffering and hurting that taste is one of the only sources of pleasure that's left. And even that starts to go. The average senior has only half the taste buds they did when they were a kid. However, when we choose to eat wholesome, healthy foods, our taste buds change. Our bodies change. We become more alive. We become more vibrant and dynamic and capable. We have less fatigue. We sleep better. We have more pleasure, more aliveness, and more joy. And that is a wonderful thing because I'm not just about adding years to life. I'm about adding life to years. I want us to thrive. I want us to love our lives. I don't know how long any of us will be here on this planet, but I want to make the most of every single day. George Bernard Shaw said it so beautifully. He said, this is the true joy in life, to be used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, to be a force of nature instead of a feverish clot of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. He said, I'm a member of the community, and as a member, it's my privilege to do for it whatever I can before I die. 
Life is no brief candle to me. It is more of a splendid torch, which I want to burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. So I want to thank you for all the ways that you burn your candle or your torch, all the ways that you live and breathe and stand for a world that is worthy of our children and their aspirations and their dreams. I want to thank you for all the ways that you vote with your dollars, with your food choices, with your life, with your relationships for the kind of a world that you want, for the kind of health that you want. Step by step, one bite at a time, we are shifting the course of history. We are creating a demand for a new food economy that is based in health, and we are reclaiming our lives and our health and our world in the process. Thank you so much for your partnership in this revolution.